another episode of DIG, Do It Your Goth, and today we're going to be making some very easy to make and gothic Christmas ornaments. Join me. Okay, we're going to be looking at this. What is that? That is a container of seaweed, and there's many different types. However, my wife just so happens to be Korean, and I'm going to show you what's inside. That's dried seaweed, and is this good? But we're not going to be using the seaweed today. We're going to be using the box to make an ornament. One of the first things we need to do is take the seaweed out of the ornament. As you can see, do not, do not eat this package piece. Save that for later. Um, and you're going to have one of these plastic boxes. Now if you're wondering where you can buy these, any health food store has this, any Asian supermarket has this, they come in different sizes. Uh, today I'm going to be using this one and we're going to be painting it. Actually we're going to wash it first. If you can't get this oil out because it, it is sesame seed oil, you just shoot Windex in there and that will take all of the, the oil out of it. It will cut the grease. Okay so our first step is now to wash this clean so let's get a nice clean washed container okay once you have a nice clean container we're going to cut this plastic and it is it's very 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 soft plastic you will have no problem using even children's scissors to cut this type of plastic and we want to trim this down just enough so we have what looks like a frame and it folds over really well. So we're going to be using it to mount something. There it is. Now, this is a different style. Now, if I was to use this one, I would be cutting out this indentation area here and then mounting something else behind that. However, for this video, I have another style that I'm going to show you. And first thing we're going to need to do is we need to paint the interior, the interior, not the exterior, the interior, our favorite color, black. Okay, so step number three, we're going to use our favorite color, black, right here. I am now using a 660 black, which is a shield acrylic. You don't have to use any other uh, paints and acrylics. I just, acrylics are incredible. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint the interior very, very nicely. I was actually making one of these last night, listening to Sir Christopher Lee read Edgar Allan's Poe, The Raven, last night. <laughs> Just inspiring. Very, very, very nice. If you don't know very much about Edgar Allan Poe, he also wrote... One of my favorite stories, the, the Fall of the House of Usher, which I read when I was in ninth grade. I'm not going to tell you how old I am now. <laughs> but anyways, that is what it's going to look like. You may need two coats, but once they're finished, they will look like this. And we're going to use these to move our project along. Set that aside, let that little guy dry, because we just finished that one. Now I'm just going to show you the two that I actually had made. This is before. You're going to have to make two templates today. This is a polysynthetic uh, overhead projector plastic that I used, and I just laid it on top of there, and I traced around the, uh, the part that is recessed here so I can get a template, and I made this template that fits inside of that. So if you have a picture or something, you lay this on top, you can trace around it, and then you can put the picture inside there. You're also going to need another template, which is the same size as the back. And we're going to be using that today to put that on a styrofoam piece. I'm using a just a meat packaging pla uh, package here, and we're going to put that on the back. I like it because it has ridges. We're going to cut out a piece with that. It's right there in the center so we can get the nice lines. Before we glue them together, I've actually cut some ribbon because I'm making two of these today. And I want to put the ribbon right inside, right there, of the piece. So I don't want it on the outside, I want it on the inside so we can cover it up nicely. Step number one, 
my hot glue down. Um, the problem is that you got to remember that hot glue and styrofoam are not the best of friends. And also, we want a nice loop in our Nice loop in our ornament to keep that down. Let that dry for a moment. Definitely, we're going to need a white glue today. I, I just discovered that. And you know, that's the best part about me making these videos is that I include the discovery of what I'm doing in there. Hold nothing back from your audience. <laughs> you know, they need to know too. Uh, we're going to put the white glue up and around, and then we're going to mount it on here. So let's see if we can get some glue out here. Here it comes. Okay. Don't worry, it is a um, transparent drying glue. So I'm not worried about anything, plus we're going to be painting over it. So good. Yeah, look at that. Just, just stuck right to there. Okay, so let's let that dry. We'll move on to the next stage. Still waiting for our piece to dry, but this is the same size template as the one that's drying, and I had produced an image that will fit nicely in there. Uh, this image comes from a book that was printed in the 1850s so basically there is a usage of 10 images from the book for any project you want to use um, from the glass crystal exhibition in England. Now I wanted to show you that when you cut this out you're going to need the template. We want to trace around there nicely and then put that in there so let's do it right now. I'm just measuring to size just put it in there. That is going to look really cool. Kind of like a mini cell phone, huh? Okay, now once our glue is dried, using again the 660 acrylic black, and we're going to paint the edges. Let's just paint up the edges ever so nicely here. Using the same exact black going to make this look really good. Make sure you get the under parts of the styrofoam. Let's get my finger there. <laughs> okay, let's paint this up and see what it looks like when it's dry. Okay, now once you got your Ornament dry. This is so lightweight. <laughs> you can't just like air. I'm using a glue stick. Now, the reason why I'm using a glue stick and not the white glue is that the white glue is a little bit on the wet side and I want this to lay flat. Also, you can move it around quite a bit if you want that to. Not in the right areas. One of our pieces that we're working on here, I've got these beautiful faceted fake diamonds, and I'm using my long tweezers to figure out placement of where I want to do them. Now, I only have four of the ruby fakes left, so I'm going to put them on her piece and let's see what they look like. Wow, that's already adding quite a bit. I want to put these four on the corners. When you're making when you're making ornaments, don't be afraid to just let the ornament sit for a while and cool off. You don't have to rush to finish it all in one day. You actually can wow it looks so nice. There. Look at this. Just four simple little. I'll put that up so you can see that. Four simple pieces. Looks so much better. I just changed the angle now so you can see that. Look at that. Look at how really nice. Just four very well placed. 
diamonds. Look, I should have been a jeweler or one of those watchmaker guys. But we're still not done with this. Even though we're going to put those on there, I'm going to glue those on. Use a little bit of white glue. There's something about that white that's too stark. Stark. It's just it. It's too. It's too white for me. So what we want to do is we want to age that. So let's make up a wash and let's age that paper. So I'm going to pull our little thing. I actually just glued the. I just glued the. Uh, diamonds on here. I have a little bowl of water here and I'm using a what, what color number this is? This is a burnt umber number 624. And you're just going to put a little tiny, just a very, very, very small if I can get out of there. Come on guy. There. Just a little bit of burnt umber and you're going to need a soft brush and some water and you're going to make up slurry. We're just going to get that done. We don't want any particle pieces. We want a nice slurry from the burnt umber. Burnt umber is very, very good in aging things. So let's apply this now using enough water to our piece. Any person who is into goth is usually into antiques anyway, so they like old stuff. So, dulling down that 21st century modern white is very appropriate. I love that it's now, the paper's wrinkling. Got a little bit of a wave in there. You can actually apply more if you wanted to inside a more of a detailed area. Do this as much as you like. Oh, it feels good. Pretty. Okay. And just let that dry. Brought that back a little bit. It's dried already, so I'm going to go a little bit more. And just do the edges. It's a little bit too heavy. Just touch the edges. This is very relaxing to make this ornament. Put some more water on there. Let that blend in. For the final coat for our piece here, we're going to age it. I have a bit of water which I've already contaminated. <laughs> You're going to use a little bit of 660 black acrylic and we're going to make a slurry with water. And let's stain this guy. We did the first staining, let's do the second staining. Who knows, maybe you just liked it the way it was. I want to make it even darker so it fits in with the, the piece. A 
dryer brush. Soak up any excess. Vintage. Let that dry. Came out really nice. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and click down the link below. Also, have a Merry Gothmas.